The driving question for this video is how do we describe a substance? All right. So we have two major ways to describe a substance. We can describe its physical aspect, okay, or and its chemical aspect. So therefore, we have these two categories listed here. They are the physical properties and chemical properties. So let's take a look of what they are individually. Okay, chemical properties are the ones that can be measured or assessed without the change of its own chemical composition. That means after we make the assessment or measurement, it is still the same material or substance. Okay, it doesn't change. Unlike the chemical properties, they are the ones that would be changed during a chemical reaction. Okay, so we describe how it reacts or what happens uh, during a chemical reaction. So let's take a look on the some uh, examples of physical properties. So here you see on the green color. Okay, this is a brief list of chemical uh, physical properties. Okay, there are more, but I'm just listing a few right here just to give you. Um, a taste of what physical properties are. So we have color, we have odor, we have mass, we have volume, we have freezing point or melting point, we have we have boiling point, we have physical state. Okay. So we have more on top. Uh, we have more properties in addition to these. We can talk about electrical conductivity. We can talk about the heat conductivity. But for the sake of the time being, uh, we are going to limit our discussion in these few um, physical properties. So let's use an example to illustrate these physical properties. Let's use water. Okay, something that we eat every single day, something that we drink every single day. We need it. Uh, because if we don't have it, we'll die. Okay, so let's use that because we have a, a lot of knowledge on water. So let's talk about the color of water. Okay, water is colorless. Okay, it's transparent. We can see through water. Okay, uh, you know that when you uh, drink water, you can see through the water. Okay, you can see the background, even though water is right in between. Uh, when you go swimming, you can see everything in water. Okay, so it's colorless. Odor. If you smell water, it doesn't smell anything special, okay? Because it is odorless, odorless, okay? It does not give any kind of smell, okay? Now, when we talk about mass and volume, these two physical properties, we have to pay attention to these two because these two physical properties depend on the amount that we have, okay? Let's say, for example, if you pour water into a beaker, okay, or graduated cylinder, and it is 100 milliliter, okay, and so you would say the volume is 100 milliliter, okay. Now, if you pour some of the water out, okay, to the sink, then the volume will be less than the original amount, okay. So you can see how volume changes with the amounts that you have. Same thing with mass. For example, if you want to measure mass of water, what would you do first? Well, you would have to measure the mass of the container on a scale first. And then you would pour water into the container. Now, why would you measure the mass of a container at the very first place? Well, the reason why we measure the uh, mass of the container is because we would like to know uh, the mass of the container so that when we measure the total mass next, we will minus the mass of the container from the total so that we know what is the mass of the water inside a container. Okay, so let's say we have a hundred milliliter of uh, water in a container. Okay, from what we know from density that you may learn in middle school, we learned that water is one gram per milliliter. Okay, so if you have a hundred milliliter of water, it's going to turn out as a hundred grams. Okay, and you could confirm that with by using a by using a balance or a scale. Okay, now freezing point and uh, melting point. Now a lot of people got this too confused. Okay, they got this confused by thinking they are very different, but actually 
they are the same thing. Okay? Now, think about this. Let me ask you two questions. At what temperature would water freezes to become ice? Okay, think about it. And then the second question is, at what temperature would ice melt to become water? Think about that. Okay, now the answer for these two questions is zero degrees Celsius. Okay, they have the same answer. Now, why would that happen? Okay, now that may sound a little bit like weird at the very first place, but it, when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. The reason why they are both zero degrees Celsius is because when we when the state changes between uh, when there's a physical change between liquid and solid, okay, it happens at a particular temperature, assuming that it has a standard pressure, okay, around the uh, matter, okay. So when water freezes to become ice, it happens at zero degrees Celsius. And when ice melts to become water, it happens at zero degrees Celsius. The reason why it's at zero degrees Celsius is because this is the temperature where these two states are in equilibrium, okay. So under normal condition, we would not expect to see ice at any temperature above zero, okay. At normal condition, we don't expect to see water below zero degrees Celsius, okay. So by saying, by telling you the, uh, the explanation, I will, I will hope that you understand the difference, uh, well, the simil well the, not the difference, but actually there, that the freezing point and melting point are the same, okay? It's just the, uh, the, di the, the difference is uh, the, the direction of the process, okay? Changing from solid to, to liquid or from liquid to solid, okay? Boiling point, okay. Boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, okay. And its physical state. Now, when we talk about the physical state of water, we have to talk about the. Uh, we have to mention the temperature of the uh, of the of the H2O, okay. That's not used water because water is uh, restricted to the liquid water. Let's talk about. Let's use H2O uh, in this sense. So at room temperature, uh, the water, water is uh, H2O is in the form of water, liquid. Okay, and if you say if you say you um, you have a condition, um, you have a setting of with a temperature that is like uh, negative five degrees Celsius. Okay, H2O would exist as a solid, which we call it ice. If you put the H2O at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius, H2O would exist as a form of gas. We call it steam. So this is how we use uh, different, asp uh, different terms to describe the physical aspect or physical properties of water. Now, for chemical properties, okay, so we have to describe its reactivity and or how it reacts okay with different substances in a chemical reaction for example carbon reacts with oxygen to form co2 okay so this is this sentence describes the um, the reactivity with uh, of carbon with oxygen okay so if you put carbon and oxygen together it is very likely that uh, with some other addition of uh, energy it will react to form CO2. Now, in our example, okay, now we are, you are told that you should not start your car inside a garage with the garage door closed. Why is that, okay? Well, if you have the uh, garage door closed, so you're in a, pretty much like a closed system, and there is a limited amount of oxygen, okay? And when the, when the car starts running, the gasoline, which is formed, uh, which is uh, primarily in the form of octane, is going to have a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction is when a uh, when an organic compound, uh, usually hydrocarbon, 
reacts with oxygen with an input of heat energy. Okay, and well, if you have a lot of oxygen, it's going to produce carbon dioxide and water in a combustion reaction. But if you have a limited amount of oxygen in the system, okay, so the 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 uh, the organic compound, the octane gasoline, is going to react with oxygen in an insufficient way. Okay, so there's not enough oxygen for the gasoline to react. So what happens is that it produces the reaction itself produces carbon monoxide, which is toxic to your body, and water. Okay, and that's the reason why you should not start your car with the garage door closed. Okay. Another example on chemical properties is sodium. Okay, let's say sodium reacts with water. Okay, H2O. What would it form? Okay, so with our experience, water uh, when sodium reacts with water, it produces sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So this is to describe how sodium reacts with water. Okay, what happens in that particular reaction? So. Here we have chemical properties and physical properties. Okay, so I hope you understand the differences between these two. Okay, now I'm going to extend a little bit more on the physical properties. Okay, we talk about the uh, what we need to pay attention on mass and volume. Okay, because these two properties depend on on um, the amount of the substance. Okay, and for the others. Okay, they don't. They don't depend on the amount of the substance. For example, if we have a drop of water, okay, and compare this drop of water to a tank of water, would the freezing point be different? Would the boiling point be different? Okay. Well, the mass is going to be very different, okay, and the volume is going to be very different. So, what can we say about these two? Can we? talk a little bit more about these two kinds of physical properties. So if you want to find out more, you can click uh, the next video, which is on the intensive and extensive physical properties. Thank you.